shotgun is in blueprints, weapons, and right here. Now we haven't done anything, so we need to open up the full blueprint editor and then right click and get pull trigger. Grab the event and there it is. So the shotgun is going to function again differently to everything we've done so far. However, it also needs to add script to our fire function. So we're going to need to do that as well. So to begin with, we'll get pull and release trigger. We'll also get is trigger pulled. Set the top one to true. And just like our sniper rifle, we're going to need a cooldown for this. So get cooldown. Drag out. We need to not be cooling down if we want this script to work. Holding beam, clicking for a branch. We'll click that in. This will set the trigger to be pulled and also ask if we're in cooldown. If we're not in cooldown, we'll continue with the script. So where this changes is right here. Instead of just firing the function once, a shotgun will have multiple shells. So to simulate this effect, we're going to fire the function as many times as desired. So we'll get our fire function. and to repeat it instantaneously five times over, we're going to get a for loop. A for loop is essentially a repeater. It will repeat a script as many times as you tell it to repeat. So whatever you plug into the loop body here will be repeated as many times as you specify. So to set this up, what we need to do is specify what our first firing is and our last firing. And the difference between is how many times it will repeat. To make it easier to understand, we're going to set our first entry as one and our last entry as five, which will equal five shots. If you wanted to do something particular at every index, every time the loop body happens, you could set something different to happen by using that variable right here. But we just need this to repeat five times indiscriminately. So we're going to leave it like this. Now, as far as the player is concerned, they will see the weapon fire once because this happens extremely quickly. It's not as if you're going to see any delay between them. But what we don't need is our cooldown value set five times as well. So what we're going to do is move this over here and anything that we don't want repeated will be set on this side and anything that we have desired to be repeated will be on this side. So let's grab our cooldown setter and put it here. Now another way to achieve this separation is a node called do ones. And we're going to use this to put some script on the other end as well. So do once will, as specified, only fire that script once, which means we're going to fire the weapon five times, but anything after this area will be fired just once on the first pass, which is great because if you remember inside our weapon function, that's also where we manage ammo. So this would actually use five shotgun shells and we don't want to do that. What we want to do is fire five times, but for the player, it'll feel like one. My current solution to this problem is to get ammo actual and set ammo actual to ammo actual plus four which will make up the difference. Again, not the most elegant solution, but this is what I've come up with in the meantime until I found a better way to do it. And rest assured, when I find a better way, it will make it to these tutorials. So if we didn't have this do once node, we would be adding four bullets five times over. We'd have the opposite problem. So let's add a delay at the end of this as well. 
And again, we don't want that delay repeating. So that delay will go right here. So plug that in and set it for as much as you want. One second will do it. This is more for the sound. And then after that, we'll set our cooldown to false. And there's that. Now, next up, if we're going to fire our weapon five times, how is it going to spread? Because at the moment, if we fire, it's just one line forward. How do we tell the weapon to spread as a shotgun would? To do that, we're going to enter our fire weapon and we're going to make a small adjustment which will benefit all of our weapons. We're going to add a variable. This variable is going to be accuracy and it's going to be a float. The way accuracy is going to work inside of this will be by adding an offset to this line trace. Currently, this line trace is 100% accurate. If we shoot, it will shoot straight ahead. But if we're going to make this more realistic, all of our weapons are going to have varying accuracies. And on top of that, we might also want to affect the accuracy based on whether we are downsides or not. So to do this, let's grab this plus node, copy and paste it. We're going to plug the output into end, the input into the top. And now we can mess with this accuracy right here. So the first thing we'll do is get a make vector which will convert whatever value we have in accuracy over here. And then between the make vector and the accuracy, we're going to get a random float in range. So this will, as specified, get a random float within a particular range. That range will be set by accuracy and we have three values to set with that. So we're going to copy that and paste it three times. And then plug the top into X, the middle into Y, and the bottom into Z, all essentially achieving the same result. Now, if I plug accuracy in as it is, let's compile that. We're not gonna set a value here, but let's pretend that value is 200. If I drag and drop that 200 value into minimum and into maximum, then my value is always going to be 200, defeats the purpose. So we need two nodes out of accuracy. We need the maximum, which will be directly here from the accuracy node. And we need the opposite. So if we have plus 200, we need negative 200. So to achieve that the most effective way, we're going to get a multiplier by getting a star, shift eight, and we're going to times our accuracy by minus one, which will spot us right on the other side of that. If it was plus 200, it'd be minus 200. If it was plus 2000, it'd be minus 2000. So we'll plug that minimum in here to all of these, just like that. So all we need to do to adjust said accuracy now, once we've compiled and saved, is if we go back up to this shotgun and we click on default values, there is our accuracy ready to be set. And if we don't like the way that these default values are arranged, we can come back to weapon base and Let's say we drag the accuracy up here. Now, whatever I've set here, after I've compiled and saved, will be reflected here. So for the shotgun, we're going to set an accuracy of 250. Set whatever value you want. I'm setting these reasonably wide at the moment. However, I could set them wider now if I wanted to say affect accuracy as my character levels up, or I could set them to a default value and leave them there if I don't have a level up system in the game. We will eventually have a level up system, so these numbers don't have to be baked in. One error I did make, I should not be adjusting ammo actual here. I should be adjusting clip actual, so all we need to do is get 
clip actual and replace that here with ammo actual on both ends. And then one last thing we need to do before we finish up the shotgun is right here, this do once. We shoot our weapon once and the do once triggers. Now the do once needs a reference of when to reset. To reset the do once, we're going to call from our release trigger. So drag over and plug in that reset there. Double click on it and you'll get a reroute node, which means you can clean it up. Compile, save, and now when we hit play, we're going to hit three to get to our shotgun. And when I shoot it once in the top left, we should get a shell value of nine. Brilliant, it's working. You can see here our five line traces perfectly lined out and you can see that 250 actually isn't that wide. So you could widen that a little bit further if you want. I'm going to shoot again, but this time I'm going to double click to test the cooldowns working. And there it is. I'm not sure if you could hear that click, but I did double click as quickly as I could. So that one second cooldown is working. So that's our shotgun done and our switching weapons done. One last thing to do, we'll actually go and use our accuracy in our assault rifle and in our pistol. I'm not going to adjust it in the sniper rifle at this point because I would expect the sniper rifle has a perk of being extremely accurate. Although you could go and adjust it, I leave mine at zero. The assault rifle, I will change its accuracy to 100. Again, could sharpen that in iron sights. And the pistol, I'm going to change to 25. And while I'm here, I'm also going to change these ranges as well because I've noticed that the ranges are all the same. So for the assault rifle, we'll leave that at 5,000. We'll make the pistol 7,500. And we'll drop down the shotgun to 2,500. compiling all of them and if I pop back over here now we'll actually need to change the range of the sniper rifle to something ridiculous like 20,000. So now if I have my assault rifle it should be a little less accurate which it is. You can see that even though I'm aiming in the same spot it's spreading almost simulating recoil. If I switch over to my pistol and I aim in one spot and just shoot straight, you can see that those lines are just ever so slightly different. Switching to a shotgun, we know that spread works, but we'll test our range. We should be getting a stop range essentially. You can see here that that range is still pretty incredible, but this makes the shotgun particularly ineffective at long range. Our sniper rifle should just go on for a very long time. We probably won't be able to see the end of this, but we'll just stand on the edge here. And we will shoot this way. And we can see that line going on for quite some time. So there it is. We have our assault rifle, our pistol, our shotgun, and our sniper rifle all shooting with different accuracies, different damage values, different ranges, and with different firing styles as well to make four unique weapons. Again, we will be doing the rocket launcher in the same vein as grenades or a grenade launcher because we'll actually spawn a projectile. We won't just be drawing a line there. We actually need to make a rocket fly through the air. Yeah.